Hey, I can finally get this in the thumbnail. What's up, Hydreigon? Thumbnail. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of Boost to the Top of VGC 2021. The ladder has reset, the season has reset, so we're back in Great Ball 9, as we always are at the beginning of the season. Now today I'm going to be using a team sent to me by my buddy Jack, formerly Jack the Battler, now Jack TK. He's on Twitch, I'll link him in the description down below. He's a great player, he consistently reaches the top of the ladder, and he always has really cool teams. Uh, we were buddies back in the day, in fact, like we were, when I was at like... 100 subs he was around the same thing we grew together and he ended up dropping youtube all together but he's a cool dude still talk to him to this day it's been a couple of years since i met him but we're gonna be using this team with hydragon a very cool team he gave me some advice for using the team and we're gonna get into it if you guys want to do me a favor if you enjoy this at any point in time leave a like in the video subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because i bring you guys daily pokemon sword and shield content and comment down below what your favorite dragon type is i'm personally a very big fan of flygon but dragapult's a close second for me but yeah let's get into it Great Ball 9, just like the beginning of each season. Hopefully we won't face too much cheese, because a lot of uh, Great Ball ends up being that way at the beginning of the season, but hopefully we'll get out of there fast enough. Alright. Double battle. Let's do it. I I'm, I'm excited to use this team. Like, I don't know the EV spreads or anything, but hopefully uh, I can just sort of, you know, get, like feel it, you know? Just feel it a bit, feel it out, understand how the team works. I'm a big fan of uh, Dual Screen's Grimmsnarl right now. It's huge in the metagame. It, I think it's overtaken Regieleki mainly because of... I don't know, there's this funny meme I saw called Schrodinger's Grimmsnarl, which was basically like, yeah, it's carrying Taunt, Fake Out, Light Screens, play, not Play Rough, um, Spirit Break, Darkest Lair. It's carrying all of them at the same time. You don't know until you face it. And Trick Lagging Tail is another thing you have to take into account. Grimmsnarl is a very, very tricky Pokemon to play. And it's just so good in best of ones. I would argue Grimmsnarl is probably like the third best Pokemon for the best of one format, with Dusclops just objectively being the best, mainly because of Frisk. Frisk is so huge. I want to make a video about that soon. Let me know if you're into that. So we're facing Kiki, rank 9. And they're facing... We're, we're facing a pretty similar team, I guess. Uh, not really. <laughs> I saw Grimmsnarl, Zapdos, and I'm like, yeah, it's the same team. It's the same team. It's not. So... I don't know how I play this team with this, with how I play against this team with this. Uh, I would assume leading Zapdos wouldn't be bad at all. They do have, actually, they really don't have much for Zapdos. Hmm. I suppose I'll just set up screens and go Zapdos. Uh, in the back here, I would enjoy having Lando around. AV Lando is pretty good in this matchup. And there isn't much of a reason not to bring Hydreigon. Let's do it. I I'm excited to try out Hydreigon in this format. It's been a long time since I've even touched that Pokemon. Like, years? <laughs> I, I, Jack, his favorite Pokemon is Hydreigon, or at least his second favorite. I forget what his first is. I think it's Charizard. A little bit cliche, but um, Hydreigon's a cool Pokemon. And I know every time I see a Hydreigon on ladder, I'm like, yeah, that's Jack. I'm playing Jack. And one time I was actually correct. I was playing with Graham Amity. We were making a video together on his channel. And he ended up playing a player named Jack with a Hydreigon on his team. And I just Snapchat Jack. I'm like, are you playing Pokemon right now? He goes, yeah. You're playing against someone named Amity? He goes, yeah. Oh, we're playing against each other. So that, that was a fun time. That was a fun time. Just being able to recognize him on later. So if you see him, you'll you'll know who he is. He's the he's the guy with the name Jack and the Hydreigon. An iconic duo. As my opponent leads off Grimmsnarl and Heatran, I go Zapdos Grimmsnarl. Now, Zapdos is a really bulky Pokemon, and Jack let me know that this is a extremely bulky one. Like, just EV spread-wise. Um, Lando wouldn't be awful here, so I think I'll just go hard Lando and get up my light screen. If they are running Taunt, I'm immune to it, so I don't have to worry about that. Fake Out would be annoying, though. Have to keep it real. Fake Out would be annoying, but light screen, AV Lando should be good here. Get that meaningless intimidate out. <laughs> I mean, I guess it lowers the damage output of Spirit Break, but beyond that, not much. Is they're going to Dynamax? I'm cool with that. Likely a Max Flare into the Lando slot, but with my Light Screen up and the Assault Vest, it's going to do a lot just because it's Heatran using Max Flare. That Pokemon's so underrated right now, but I should be able to eat it. And they do not like facing Lando. Most of these guys are Shookaberry as well, so they'll be able to take a hit. They go for their light screen. Or, I go for my light screen, my bad. They're probably going for the same. Fake tears. Ooh. Remember how I said I should take that? I, I'm not. I'm probably not. 
Schrodinger's Grim Snarl. Oh wow. Okay, never mind, Lando. You kind of, you kind of nasty, Lando. You kind of crazy. Lando's kind of going crazy here. All right. Uh, I would like to get a Thunder Wave off on that guy. I'll actually switch in Hydreigon since I don't think they'll be going for a Spirit Break into Landers. It just doesn't make sense. And I should be able to eat the hit. We'll get a Thunder Wave off on the Heatran to neutralize it for a bit. You know, just reduce the speed a little bit. Uh, and I actually really like... I, I think I really like Hydreigon in this matchup now. Now that, you know, Lando's off the board for Dynamax options, I think Hydreigon's okay. <laughs> I have to be really careful with the uh, Spirit Breaks, though. They get off the Reflect. And I should eat this hit. Max Steel Spike. Okay, maybe maybe not as well as I thought, but good enough. Nice mid-ground play by my opponent. Alright. So I have a couple of options here. I think my best play is just to... I could go Zapdos here now. I don't think they're... I'm literally just making defensive switches to the point where I can Dynamax something and win. Or Reflex wouldn't be bad also. I could also just Spirit Break their Grim Snarl, because I haven't done any damage yet. I'm playing super, super conservatively for the first half of this game, because I really don't want to lose something this early. I think I might just go for the raw Earth Power. That should be an awful option, because I can I can break their... Uh, I can break their... Shookaberry, presumably. Yep, there it is. And then Lando should be a lot safer. As I'm assuming I'm gonna get Steel Spiked and Spirit Breaked. There it is. Spirit Break onto them. Do like nothing because, you know, Steel Spike and Reflect. But I'm glad I didn't burn my Dynamax so early. Alright. Lando wouldn't be awful as a Dynamax in this matchup, but I have to be real careful now. They go for their Spirit Break. I don't have a Reflect Up or anything, so that's actually going to do more. And now I'm kind of feeling Zapdos, but... I could just go for Earthquake and switch in Zapdos. That should be safe. I know some people get annoyed with how I play. Like, at least, like, no one's commented about it, but some of my buddies, when I, like, play against them, they're like, dang, dude, you, like, don't Dynamax until the very end. I'm like, yeah, that's just that's just how I play. I like to play very conservatively for the majority of the game. Now, I could predict them to go out into... I could predict them to switch out their Heatran here. They could go out into, like, Zapdos... Not Zapdos, yeah. They go out to, like, Zapdos or Rillaboom. I kind of want a U-turn for that reason. Yeah, I think I'm going to U-turn here. And go into my Zapdos. I just feel like that's going to happen. They shouldn't get rid of Heatran so early. Oh, it looks like they're staying in. I might have made an oopsie. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> now, I'm not going to enjoy the Spirit Break coming my way, presumably. I really didn't think they'd just give me that. I mean, I guess we are only in Great Vault here, so I shouldn't expect too many heavy predictions. Okay, it's in a Grim Snarl, that's fine. I think I have to go for the Zapdos endgame. I'll just go ahead and set up a Reflect, or I guess I can just Spirit Break to play it safe. And I'll Dynamax Max Airstream into the Grim Snarl. Since I'm not too scared of Heatran now, I'm going to be Dynamax. They can go for a fake tiers or whatever. I have screens up. I should be okay. Like, it's going to do a decent amount, but it's because, you know, Sun Boosted and minus two, but I should be all right. As long as I can steamroll past them as soon as their light screen ends, uh, I should be fine. Dang. Okay, I've never Dynamaxed a Zapdos in this game. That's kind of powerful, to be honest. You go for Trick. What is that? Lagging Tail? 
full incense, same thing. A little bit disappointing. By how they were using this, I thought it'd be dual screens. Or like, you know, light clay. Because they already showed a screen. But I should be alright even though I'm like, you know, the slowest thing forever. Just because Zapdos is so bulky and we have screens up. I get a crit on that, lowering a special attack. They're fully paralyzed. Getting a little bit lucky here. Sunlight's fading. Okay, I should be able to steamroll past them despite everything that's happened now. Just because I have, I've set up an endgame where they can't really defend much versus my Dynamax. They'd have to make a lot of really, really smart switches, and I just have to play safe. There's their Lando. I should prioritize Lando above all else. Probably Assault Vest. Light screen's gone. I still have my light screen for a couple more turns. Um, I'll go ahead and get up a Reflect here to make sure I eat the hit. And I will once again just max Airstream into Lando. I'm assuming they just Rock Slide here. Yep. Not doing much at all. Nice. They go for the Heat Wave. They're going to be able to pick up a KO here. And now I can just go for, like, Airstream Earthquake and be fine. If this KOs, that'd be great. Eh, not gonna KO, but... With Reflect Up and everything, I, I think I'm fine. I don't think I can lose anymore. Especially if I get my second Airstream off next to my Lando. The Reflect wears off too, so Earthquake is safe here. I'm just surprised they've been so open to giving me their Heatran. Getting Intimidate off. Yeah, they would need, like, a critical hit rock slide to knock me out. So, Earthquake. Max Airstream. Next turn, I'll be faster than their Lando with mine, guaranteed. Because Jack makes very slow Landos. I believe he said this guy's got, like, 20 speed on him. Jack plays similarly to me. But, like, also not. Like, he'll make a team... I can use his teams pretty well just because of that. He'll make a very bulky team that focuses on just wearing the opponent down. I cannot play hyper offensive for the life of me. Like, I have to play slow, controlled games. They go for U turn. Uh, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that, mainly because something's going to take a max airstream and they're not going to like it. And my Lando is going to be able to, you know, <laughs> get plus one speed. Even if they switch in their Landris, I think I've set up a position where Zapdos is pretty difficult for them to knock out. And they end up bringing in their Zapdos, which is fine. I can lock myself into Rock Slide and just go for a uh, Thunderbolt this next turn. Oh, that did so much. I think they might be within Rock Slide range now. My Light Screen should be wearing off in, like, the next turn or something. If not this turn. I forgot to count. I just have to not mess up this ending. Or miss a Rock Slide. <laughs> Alright, um, I'm gonna go for Rock Slide here. And I should go for Thunderbolt into this Zapdos. I think. Because, I mean, I don't take too much from Heat Wave from Zapdos. I think I'll just Thunderbolt into the Heatran to play it safe in case Rock Slide does KO. Which, at 50%, it might. Alright, that's fine. I, make, I, I get a lot out of that turn. As long as I connect this. Come on, Lando, you got this. Alright, yeah. That is a hopefully dead Heatran. <laughs> Hair Flinch? Nope. I don't manage to get that lucky. Can I take this with screens and stuff? No burn. Awesome. No burn. Cool. And I think I win now. Light screen wore off, so I'm going to be taking more from the... From the presumably a heat wave going into my Lando. And this is going to be a really, really annoying endgame. I think Heat Wave into Rock Slide should do it on their Zapdos, or Rock Slide into Heat Wave. But, dang, this is this is a little bit freaky. I have to admit, this is a little bit freaky. Let's go for it. Lagging Tail on my Zapdos is huge. Connect my Rock Slide. One flinch, maybe? I think that's within range of Heat Wave. They get their Heat Wave off. I'm going to lose my Zapdos. Or not my Zapdos, my... Well, yeah, I'm going to lose both of them if they connect their Rock Slide. That did a lot. Oh yeah, their life orb. 
Oh, I get the flinch. Is this going to be enough? Not quite. Can I get a burn? Nope. All right. I just need to live a rock sled or flinch or something. I need them to miss, essentially. That's that's my end game. Unfortunately, uh, I'm probably going to lose this, just statistics-wise. Yep, there it is. On Fortnite, losing my first match of the season. No big deal. I could have played a little bit better, but I think, I think I'm going to continue to play safe. Good game to my opponent there. Continue battling. Yeah, I'd say the game-changing moment there was the surprise lagging tail. Ooh, Great Ball 8, gross. That's always, like, annoying. When you're, like, at the beginning of the season and you fall into Great Ball 8 and you're like, Oh no, have I lost it? Have I lost my luster? So we face off versus another rank 8. And they have a pretty interesting team. They definitely do not like Zapdos screens lead at all. They really don't like it, but I have to be careful with Schrodinger's Grim Snarl. I'll lead off with my own Grim Snarl. Um, they have no Fairy type, so Hydreigon can go stupid once more. And I think I bring. I don't want to bring Lando to this matchup just because it feels. Eh. I'll bring Kartana. Kartana will likely do a bit better. Um, I mean, Rotom wouldn't be awful either. Actually, Rotom, Rotom can go insane. Rotom can go pretty insane in this matchup if I manage to set it up correctly, so we'll do that. I just have to play really carefully about around Rillaboom. And my thing with Rillaboom is I just don't feel safe in front of that under any circumstances, but I suppose with the Zapdos, I should be fine. Giving this thing Hurricane was kind of crazy. I never expected it to ever get Hurricane. Just because Zapdos having two completely accurate, powerful stabs under range just feels so wrong. But I'm cool with it, because I can abuse it. <laughs> I really hope I can Dynamax this uh, Hydreigon this game. Did Hydreigon get Hurricane this gen? I, I don't know. I'm surprised we don't see more Milotic this format, but I, I suppose it's just because Rillaboom, Venusaur, and Kartana exist, and they're so prominent that it's like very difficult to pull off anything with it. All right, let's see what their lead is. They lead off Metagross Rillaboom, which is, I think, pretty good. Pretty good for me. Because I can just set up a screen. I have to be real careful with that uh, Dynamax option, though. It could be pretty, pretty messy. I don't want to give them Weakness Policy just yet. And if I remove Rillaboom... If I remove Rillaboom, Rotom can go insane. What are their switch-ins? In the back, they have literally no switch-ins to max Airstream, so I'll Dynamax turn 1. I know I just said I almost never Dynamax turn 1, but there are situations where it's just ideal. I'm likely to get faked out, and I might lose my Grim Snarl, but I think it's worth the risk in case they decide to not give me Rillaboom. I think it's a, I think it's a fair trade. Alright, cool. So I'm not going to get faked out. I will get my Reflect off. And their Grimmsnarl would not enjoy this airstream. It's pretty likely they also Dynamaxed. And I'm really not scared of Metagross as long as I keep Hydreigon healthy, because Hydreigon takes like nothing from Rillaboom, and Dark Pulse is going to do a ton to Metagross. I get off my Reflect. They don't Dynamax, which is confusing to me <laughs> admittedly pretty confusing are they meteor beam that'd be insane if they were like power of meteor beam all right they should go for a light screen this next turn so i might be able to just double into them i could also thunder wave ice punch shouldn't do too much no freeze okay sweet um i could just i don't want them to get two screens up I'd much rather just do this. Just go for another Airstream and a Spirit Break to secure the KO. And I can likely Thunder Wave on the next turn. I 
Because I'm going to outspeed their Metagross with my uh, Grim Snarl now. And like I said, they have very few switch ins to this. Airstream is very strong against their team. Metagross is like their dedicated switch. As they do opt to Dynamax this turn, likely just going to go for the Hailstorm. If they go for a Steel Spike, I'd be uh, I'd be a little bit surprised. Because they definitely need to they, they need to focus down the Zapdos. It's a big issue for their team. I got I got pretty much the only screen that matters up. I don't think they have any special attackers in this game. This is more about removing Rillaboom than anything, to be honest. They get their light screen off. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the Grimmsnarl from the field. Take my just take my first piece from them. Alright. Yep, double up was a good idea there. I'd actually prefer them remo not removing my Grimmsnarl, but I think I can live one steel spike behind a reflect. I don't know, I have no idea how Jack built this guy. They steal spike, I think I can take that, I hope. Nope. <laughs> Dang. Alright, so no Thunder Wave for me, but... I don't think it's over. Mainly because I have so many options to deal with this thing. Hmm. I think I want to switch in Rotom to bait them into going for Fake Out into it or bring in the Rillaboom at some point. I would love for them just to give me Rillaboom. There's the Incineroar. Honestly, I'm pretty cool with that. I'm pretty cool with that. Because they should just go for like a... Uh, they should just go for a Fake Out into Rotom here. I'll go ahead and just airstream into their incinera. I'll focus everything around it, pretty much. And... I can even get in Hydreon. I think I'll do that. Hydreon doesn't mind this. Because Metagross doesn't really care anything to hit Rotom anyways. The Fake Out should be the thing they should go for here. Mainly because they want to stop a Nasty Plot. Yeah. And getting an airstream boost on Hydreon could be pretty big. Actually, not really. What am I saying? I just want to get Hydreigon on for free. Because <laughs> everything... I, I outspeed everything on their team anyways. Oh. Hello? What? No. What? Uh, 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 what? I'm levitating on my Rotom, bro. I'm a little bit confused by that play. I, I, I must admit, I am quite confused by that play. Uh, anyways, here I am going to go ahead and protect my Hydre... No, I should just switch out Hydreon. Because the, the Hailstorm should come in here. Um, I can go for Heat Wave damage. Because once the Dynamax ends, I'm not really concerned about plus two anything. Because I just outspeed. Or maybe I just... Mm, I can just Thunderbolt and Cinera for damage. Or just Protect. Protect makes the most sense. I'll just Protect and get in Rotom again. I have to be really careful with Rillaboom. The Rillaboom endgame is very good for them. Just because Rotom Wash is such an important piece to my side. Go for Protect. Parting Shot, maybe? Max Hailstorm. I'll leave that up. Yeah, nice. And because of Goggles, I'm not taking any damage from that. They go for a Snarl. Ooh, okay. Alright. Pretty nasty play there. Now, they should probably be bringing in the Incinerator, or bringing in the, um, the Rillaboom here, and not staying with Incinerator. So I'm somewhat tempted to go for the Raw Hurricane. I could Nasty Plot and go for Hurricane, I think. Actually, what moves does my Hydreigon have again? Mmm, I don't know. I don't know, it could be close. Maybe just will o the Metagross. I'll just will o the Metagross. And go for the Raw Hurricane. Because 
Because if I can burn them, I'm, I'm in an okay position. They're definitely tinking. Yep, they withdraw. If I land this hurricane, that's going to be huge. The prediction pays off. Awesome. And likely Assault Vest, uh, Assault Vest and Cinder, judging by how they played that turn. And the fact that they have Snarl, that's kind of a big giveaway. I can live the Ice Punch. And my play is always to double protect and then Heat Wave. Oh wait, do they die to Hail soon? Is Hail up next turn? Because then I just double protect. Oh wait, Grassy Terrain. Alright, let me think. Grass disappeared. I think Hail goes away this turn. No, because they, they max the turn after. Right? We still have so many turns of Hail. Yeah, I should be fine here. I just protect. I don't want to go for the Raw Heat Wave yet. I want to get damaged with the with the Hail, just to be safe. There's no reason not to. And then I can just start spamming, like, Dark Pulse Earth Power with uh, Hydreigon, which could be really cool. They don't have priority on Grassy Glide or anything, but... I don't know, they could be, like, Jolly on the uh, Rillaboom, which could mess me up. So I don't want to risk getting outsped on my Rotom. It's the Fake Out. Ice Punch. And they are definitely within range of Thunderbolt, so I'm not even going to risk a Heat Wave or giving them Weakness Policy or anything. I'll just Nasty Plot up right here with my Rotom and go for the Thunderbolt into Rillaboom to secure the KO. Thunderbolt, 100%. Oh, I don't... What am I saying? I kept playing like I had Nasty Plot, and I don't. I'm an idiot. Let me Will-O-Wisp here. <laughs> I kept playing like I had Nasty Plot, even though I read I, I didn't. <laughs> you guys are yelling at me in the comments. I'm just so used to Nasty Plot Rotom. Like I said, not my team, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, even though I can read. I, I'm just stupid. <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty confident that Hydreigon can seal the game. Get my Will-O-Wisp off. Yeah, I win. I'm going to say I win. I just need that, um... I just really need that light screen to go away soon. If it didn't already go away and I just continuously forget that I can't read. Oh, wait, I live. Sick. I can go for another double protect. <laughs> and then just go for the heat wave. I'm cool. I'm cool. Guys, I'm so sorry that, like, this is how I get at the beginning of the season. And when I don't play for a couple of days. Because it has been, like a while since I've consistently played on cartridge. I've just been showdown stomping for the last month, pretty much. And I don't know. Showdown, a lot of you guys won't disagree. Showdown and cartridge feel like two different games at times. I think my play here might be to get in my Hydreigon for the Rotom. Just to reset that stat. Yeah, I want to reset that stat, and they should never go for they should never go for Ice Punch into the uh, Rotom slot. They likely just went for like Fake Out or something. And Heat Wave Dark Pulse should be fine. They go for Protect, Fake Out. Yeah, Heat Wave Dark Pulse is my end game here. Hey, Hydreigon finally gets to click a move. What's up, guys? Hydreigon finally gets to do something. Two big floating boys. Let me get this animation for the... Uh, <laughs> let me get this animation in the game. Oh, they have one more turn of light screen. I think I'm okay as long as they just go for Heat Wave and Protect. Yeah. Because they have one more turn of light screen. I don't want to risk anything. Plus two, they can mess me up. Something could go horribly wrong, and I'm not willing to risk that. You feel? Yeah, you feel. Land my heat wave on both. I could have dark pulsed. I, I didn't want to risk it. Their weakness policy. Yep. There it is. And I'm assuming a snarl. It's 
It's all Gucci. In comes the Rotom. I click Hydro Pump. I click Dark Pulse, and I think I win. I love the pressure that Hydreigon can put on the field. It's just such a nice Pokemon to scare people with. Because it, it hits so hard. That's the thing. It hits so hard. They're probably going to protect here, but I don't see a reason to not just go for it. It's not like they can knock out my Hydreigon. Hey, I can finally get this in the thumbnail. What's up, Hydreigon? Thumbnail. <laughs> awesome. And Hydro Pump. Boom. That was a pretty clean game. That was a pretty clean game. I didn't mess up the end game like I did the other one. Alright guys, always play safe. Always play safe. You can play fast and loose for content, but sometimes you just gotta play it safe, you know? Alright. Well, I, I'm gonna cut it off there. It's already been 30 minutes. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate everyone who's stuck by the channel recently. Do me a favor, if you enjoyed, leave a like on the channel, or on the video. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and respond to that comment question of the day. What is your favorite dragon type? I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.